Yeah. Um, well, when I was in college, um, I guess it would have been 1996 or 1997, I, uh, I found online some places where you could download uh, music files that were pretty reasonable quality for how big they were. Um, and this was something that I had played with before in, like, in high school and, and uh, never got really, never got that whole sort of CD quality uh, sound out of the computer before. So when I, when I found these, it was pretty interesting. And uh, so I started playing around with it. And uh, one of my friends uh, in, in college at the time started making a Mac MP3 player. And, uh, and on Windows, there, was, uh, there were a couple of pieces of software uh, available, but they were kind of limited. They didn't really have a good experience when you were listening to music with them. It was sort of very functional in that, like, hey, it's playing it back, but there was very little of the sort of environment that actually made listening to music on a computer different from listening to, to it somewhere else. So things like, uh, you know, showing visualization, um, being able to seek randomly, uh, being able to build playlists, uh, all, all of this sort of stuff that's very commonplace in music playing software now. So, uh, so my friend started doing a Mac version uh, of the software called MacAmp, and uh, uh, I hadn't really done very much programming for Windows, and Windows 95 had been out, and it was starting to be used by a lot of people. So I figured, hey, this would be a good way to, to learn how to program uh, Windows application software. And so I made WinAmp. Well, it, was, it was pretty gradual. Um, there was uh, an IRC channel that I was hanging out on and had friends on. Uh, and these were people all over the world who would just hang out and talk about random things. Uh, I guess kind of like how many online communities are now. But, um, and so, you know, I, I posted early versions and people would play with them and be like, hey, this is good. And, you know, it should do this, it should do that. And, and uh, so it was this gradual thing of, of people uh, starting to use it and, and giving feedback and as that happened like you get like I don't people get excited by it and they tell their friends and it sort of it, it grows uh, it grows in its own way that way uh, which is very exciting but it kind of happens over a long period of time so it, you you know it's, time goes on and, and uh, each day isn't really that much bigger than the previous so you don't really notice it that much iTunes probably started out very similar to Winamp, other than uh, some obvious differences. It was acquired from, from a, another company. But I think since then, it's probably been, uh, it's been designed, A, by people who actually weren't the programmers on it. So you'd have people making decisions who don't even know how those, those things that are decided have to get implemented, which is often a mistake. Um, and then also, I think it's just been very dumbed down. Like um, when working on WinApp, we always tried to make things straightforward enough so that someone who didn't, who wasn't very technical, could use it and not be confused. But also expose tons of power so that if someone wanted to just completely customize it to be exactly their own um, and change the behavior to be what they expected, um, they could do that. Whereas iTunes is very much, you fit into the iTunes mold. That's just how it works.